Hey, what's up? Welcome to this uh, new video. This one is paper 2-1 of uh, October, November 2010. Now, with that being said, let's move on to the next question. So here we have question number one. So p is equal to this function or equation. Uh, part one, we have to find the value of p when q equal to minus 40. So pretty easy. Just replace this back in the equation. So p will be what? p will be 7. So I so here we have 7 first and then times minus 40 over 4 plus 15. Now again, this is paper 2, you can just use your calculator directly. So right, 7 times minus 40 divided by 4 times uh, 4 and then plus 15. That should be minus 55 for question number 1. Now for number 2, we have what? Express Q in terms of P. So here we have to make q become the subject of formula. So right now we have this. As you can see here, we have 4 in the denominator. So what can we do? We have to multiply by 4 everywhere, just to eliminate this thing. So you will have 4p is equal to 7q plus 60. So 7q will be what? Will be 4p minus 60. And finally, from this you see, q have to be 4p minus 60 divided by 7. That is your question part 2. Now let's move on to part b of the question. Now we have to factorize completely these expressions. So here we have 7, here we have c squared minus 28d um, squared. So the first thing I do realize is that what is 28? 28 is actually 4 times 7, right? And since here we have 7 and here we have 7, it is common, we can factorize. That will be 7 outside, and you'll have 1 c squared minus 4 d squared. Now again, what is 4? It is 2 squared. So that will be what? That will be 7 c squared minus 2 squared. Now this one is simply the difference of squares. As you have seen this many times before, that will give you what? 7, C minus 2D, C plus 2D. Okay, and this will be part A of the answer, part 1. Now for this one, we have to factorize. As you can see, this one is a quadratic equation. So factorizing that will give you what? So first, we have two brackets because we have x squared. Now 3x squared is 3x times x, right? And then 6 is... 1 times 6, or it can be 2 times 3. So let's try 3 and then 2. Now we want to have minus 7. So to get minus 7, we need to have minus 9 and plus 2. So this is the factorization of part 2. Now let's move on to the last one. We have to solve the equation. Solving means finding the unknown, so we have to find the value of y. So first step, we can simply cross multiply. You will have 4 equal to 35 minus 5y. So 5y will be 35 minus 4 is 31. From this, you will have y is equal to 31 divided by 5. That will be 6.2 as your answer. It is up to you. You can always express your answer as fraction if you want to, but it is no big deal if you also express as decimal place. Now, let's move on to question number 2. So what do we have here? Here we have what? We have uh, a triangle. It is a right angle triangle where AB is vertical and BC is horizontal, okay? And these are the length given to you. Now, part one, we have to calculate the angle BAC, okay? So this one is pretty simple, actually, because it is a right angle tri triangle, sorry, we can use SOCATOA, right? That's the main reasoning behind to help us to find the angle. Now, we know this side is the A side, and this side is the O side, so O and A. The reason why is because the, we, we, how do we identify that? We know that the side which is opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. The side which is opposite the, the angle is called the opposite side. And the side in between will be the A side. So as you can see, we know this A side. We know the O side. So O and A, we have to use 10. So 10 of the, the angle A is equal to opposite side, which is uh, 180, over A, which is 49. So now we have to find the angle. 
So 180 divided by 49, that will be tan inverse of the answer, should give you 74.8 degrees. So for angles, I always try to provide your answer to one decimal place. 74.8 degrees. Okay, so that will be part one of the answer. Now part two, we have to state the value of the angle of depression of C from A. So angle of depression from C of C from A. Now what are we trying to find? If you observe, so from A, so we have to start from A, and then we have to kind of draw this line, right? That makes sense. Now we have to understand what angle are we trying to find. So the angle of depression of C from A, so it will be this one. Right, so since we know this, this will have to be what? This will have to be uh, 90 minus 74.8. That will give you 15.2 as the answer. That is part A of the, of the question. Now let's move on to part B. Here we have S and P are two points at the C. So we have S and P here are two points, and L is the lighthouse. Okay. Now L, S, sorry, S is due west of L, so west, and P is due south of L. So from that we have to understand that the angle right here will be 90 because of this information right so exactly west exactly south so the angle between will be 90 now we have this length given to you and we have to use that to find the length of LP now LP is this one again when you have uh, a right angle triangle we can use a uh, circuit so but here we don't have any angles uh, we don't want to find any angles yet we can simply use what we can simply use the Pythagoras theorem let's call this X for now so you will say x square plus 1200 square is supposed to give you 1300 square. Solve for this one, that will be what? So 1300 square minus 1200 square will be this one. 2500, one, two, three. x will be what? Root of that will give you 500. So LP will be 500 meters by using the Pythagoras theorem. Okay, now for part B, calculate the bearing of S from P. So, of S from P, let's see what are we trying to find, right? So to find bearing, we always have to go to the uh, point, which is from the point, right, first, and then draw the north line, just, just to help us to understand what we are trying to find in the first place. Now, the bearing of P from S will be P from, so from P will be this one. To go from P going to S, you have to find this angle, if that makes sense, right? Now let's see what else can we uh, find, because also S is also something uh, from, from this. Let's see, if you draw a line at S, what can we derive from here? Okay, now something we can observe is that to find this angle here, it will be a combination of what? Of 180 plus, let's call this one alpha. So it will be 180 plus alpha to find this bearing. Now to find alpha, how can we find that? So we have to think, what is uh, what do we need to find the value of alpha? Now again, we can do something very simple still, which is using this. We don't need this part then, because you could use that, but it will be kind of lengthy for no reason. The easier way is to simply find this angle. Find theta, for example. So by finding theta, we can have the bearing will be 360 minus theta, if that makes sense. So simply, this way will be the simplest solution to find the bearing of S from P. So let's do that. So theta, again, we have a right angle triangle, so we can use SOCAI 12. Now, this side is called the A side. This is the opposite side, and this is the hypotenuse. Now we know this side, we know this side, we can use, what we can use? The sine. We can use anything because we know all the three sides anyways. It is up to you now in this case. So sine of theta is equal to opposite side, which is 1200, over the hypotenuse. 
So theta will be what? So sine inverse of 1200 divided by 1300 will give you 67.4. So this will give you 67.4 degrees. So by conclusion, to find the bearing, we have to take 360 and minus this value. That will be 292.6 for the bearing of S from P. So first we have to realize what are we trying to find. So by drawing the line north line at P, we, we cannot draw the angle of what we need to find. So after we do that, we observe what are the possible methods we can use to find the, the required angles. Now we can see the easiest way is to first find the inside one and take the whole thing minus this to find the answer. Okay, now for part three, a board sail from S to P, so from S to P, okay? It left S at this time and reached P at this time. Okay, so what is the time taken? So let's find that out. So you will have 16.04 minus 15.56. So take off one hour, that will be 60 minutes, right? And uh, take off one, uh, that will be what? That will be in terms of minutes or seconds? That will be seconds too. Sorry, that will be um, five here, sorry. My apologies, five, and that will become 10. 10 here. So 10 minus, uh, so 10 minus six will be four, uh, plus this will be eight. 10 minus 6 is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, right? So 14 minus 6 will be 8. Now this will be 0, and this will be 0. As you can see, it will take 8 minutes to travel from S to P. So that's the calculation behind. So 8 minutes to travel. Now, the question is to find its speed in km per hour. So one by one. Speed is equal to what? The distance travel, which is 1200, sorry, 1300, divided by time taken. Now this is in terms of meters, and this is in terms of minutes, okay? So first thing we realize is that, how do you change meters to km? So we know to change meters to km, we have to divide by 1000. And then to change minutes to hours, we have to divide by 60. So let me write this here. So finally, your answer will be what? Will be 1300 divided by 1000. That will be in terms of km. And divide by minutes 8 divided by 60. That will be in terms of hours. Okay. So 1.3, right? Divide by 8 divided by 60. That will be 9.75. So let's try again. So 1300 0, 0, divided by 1000 0, 0, 0, divided by 8 divided by 60. So 9.75 km per hour. That will be the speed of this boat that sailed from S to P based on the time and the distance traveled. Now again, I guess this is sometimes tricky. We have to like understand one hour is 60 minutes and so on and so forth, right? So this is the main thing we gotta do in this question for part three, and this is question number two. Now let's move on to question number three. So the points P, T, U, and V lie on circle number one, okay? And the points P, Q, R, S, and T lie on circle number two. Great, as you can see, we have two circles, and we have to use that to find the following answers. Now again, this looks pretty scary at first, but we have to understand that in most cases, everything that we are tested on is usually what you know already. Okay. Now, UPV, the UPQ, and VPR are straight lines. So this is, these two are straight lines, and they intersect at the point P. Okay. Now, part one, we have to find VPU. Now, first thing, let's see where is VPU. So VPU, so we have to find this angle. So, pretty easy. The angle will be the same as 38, right? So the first one is 38. Because, as you can see, angle on the same arc, so angle on the same arc 
will be the same. So reflex on the same arc will be the same value. That is the first one. Now, next one. We have to find QTR. So QTR is what? QTR, we have to find this one. Okay. So first thing, how can we uh, find this value? So it is kind of hard right now. We don't see anything very obvious. However, you can see that angle on the same arc will be the same. So this reflex here will go here. So this is the same as this. But now surprisingly as well, this is the same as this. Why? Because they are vertically opposite to each other. So whenever you have two lines that meet, this angle has to be the same as this angle. So here, these two are the same. Because of that, this is the same as this. So we understand this is the same as this. So finally, that will be also the value of 38, step by step. Now for part three, uh, we have T, P, R. So T is here, P is here, R is here. So we have to find this angle. So pretty easy. Um, what can we do to find this angle? So if you observe, if you take out the shape of P, R, S, T, right? This is T, S, R, P. Now, this one is 106. So we can see that all the points touches the circle. So because of that, we can find this angle pretty easily by using the cyclic quad theorem, which says that these two angles will have to add up to 180. So, so 180 minus 106 will give you the angle for angle P. That will be your answer for this. That will be 74. 74 degrees will be the answer for this one. Now U, P, T, uh, U, P, and T. So this one. So we have to find this one for the uh, uh, last angle. So again, how are we supposed to find this? Uh, we can observe something is that. So we know this angle. So we know this angle, 38, right? And well, we also know this angle, which is 74. Because VPR is a straight line, we understand that the whole thing here, because we have, we have a straight line, the angle here will have to add up to, to 180, right? So everything here will be 180. So this will be what? Pretty easy. Will be 180 minus 38 minus 74. Okay. That will be 68 as your answer. Okay, and that will be three part A. Now let's move on to part B of the question. So we have A, B, our points on the circle center O, okay? And um, so from this we can clearly see this is the same as this because the, they are the radius, which means these also have to be Y. That's the first thing. And then what else? Um, we know that CA is a tangent at A. So this is a tangent, which means this have to be 90, right? And now BOC is a straight line. Okay, straight line, which means this have to be 180. So now we have to express Y in terms of X. So pretty easy, if you observe, if this is 90, this is X, what is this value here? This will have to be 90 minus X, right? Because a triangle, the sum of the angles will be 180, so 180 minus 90 minus X will be 90 minus X for this angle. Now, again, we know this is 180, so what will be this one? It will be 180 minus this angle will be 90 minus x. So it will give you 90 plus x. Okay, so now since you have this angle, we can form an equation for this triangle, so O, B, and A. Something we know for that the sum of all the angles in a, in a triangle, the sum of all the angles will give you 180. So that's the equation that we can form. So basically, y plus y plus 90 plus x have to be 180. So which means 2y plus x have to be 90. Now y in terms of x, so 2y has to be 90 minus x. Y will be 90 minus x divided by 2. 
This will be y in terms of x. That will be question number three. Now let's move on to question number four. So here we have the uh, universal set, which is x is an integer, and uh, which is between the value of 10 and 21. So the first thing I would advise is to list the values if you can. So let's do that. That will be the set of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 19, 20 and 21. Now, E is an even number. So even numbers. From that set, let's see which one are even. We have 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Now we have multiples of 5. So which is 1 times 5, 2 times 5, 10, 15, and 20. And finally, we have prime numbers. So which one are prime numbers? Here we have 11. Uh, we have 13, we have uh, 17, uh, we have 19, and that should be everything for prime numbers. All right, now let's move on to the questions. So here we have uh, the Venn diagram shows the, the universal set and the set subsets E and M. Okay, now two of the elements of the universal set are shown in the appropriate subsets, as you can see here, right? Now part one, we have to also add in the subset of P. So as you can see, uh, P doesn't have anything in common with the rest, so it will be separate from the rest. So P could be right here. Because it is not in, it doesn't have anything which is in common with the rest, so it will be outside, if that makes sense. That will be P. That is part one done. So now we have to write the remaining 10 elements in the sets. So one by one. So first P will be 11, 13, 17, and 19. That's the elements of P. Now for the rest, so here we have E and M. So let's see what they have in common. They have 10. 10 will be here. Um, they have 12. 12, no, 12 is here. Uh, 14, no, 14 will be here as well. 16, no, will be here as well. 18 will also be here. 20 is here. So here we have 15 for M only. And the rest will be outside. So here we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 21 is missing, will be outside. So in total, we need to count. So here we are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So good. This should be good to go. This is your Venn diagram for all the elements. Now let's move on to part B of the questions. So the universal set is the letters of the alphabet. So this one, obviously, you will not list them because it's too many to list. But you could, you could always do that, if that makes sense. You can always do this and do one by one if you want to, of course. Now let's see, for part J, so we have a subset J, which is A, B, C, D, E, F, J, for the uh, values, and K will be A, E, I, O, U, the vowels. Now part A, part one, we have to find the number of elements for this. So let's first list down what is the elements of J union K. It will be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, um, I, O, U. So elements will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It will be 10 for the number of elements. Now how about this one? J intersecting K prime. K prime will be everything outside of the vowels, so pretty easy. That will be uh, B, C, D, F, and G. Right, pretty easy. It will be everything outside of the vowels. Now, for part three, given that L is a subset of J, so inside of J, so could be everything or less. L is also a subset of K, could be everything or less. So we have these two to consider as well. State the maximum value of this number of elements of L. So pretty easy. 
In this case, we have to understand that for it to be a subset of k, it could be all these elements or less, okay? But it is also a subset of k, so it could be, it will have to be also in this, um, in this set or less. Now, the only thing that makes sense will be, here we have a, here we have this. So basically the maximum, so basically the idea is that L could be a set with A, L could be a set with A and A, for it to be a subset for both um, sets. Now the maximum is obviously have to be this one, which is a two. Hope that makes sense, right? Now for part four, we have a letter is picked at random from K, from the group of K, okay? Now find the chance it is not an element of J. So let's see which one is not an element of J. It will be this, this, and this, which is 3 over. We have 5 in total, that will be 5. That will be your answer for part 4 of question B. Now for part C, uh, so here what do we have? Uh, in a school, 24 students are members of the club, okay? So of the A club, 30 are members of the B club, and 36 are members of the D club. Now, five students are members of all the three clubs. So here in this case, usually we have to draw something to help us understand uh, what's happening, right? So let's do that. So we have one club here, two clubs here, and three clubs here. That will be my A club, B club, and D club. So five will be for everyone. Now 12 are members of both A club and D. So A and D, everything here will be 12, so that will be 7, right? So 12 minus 5 will be 7. 13 are members of both basketball and A, so B and A, that will be 13 minus 5, that should be 8. And then 19 are um, both of D and B, 19 minus 5 will be 14. Okay, good to know. Now what else? So part 1. How many students are members? So let's first complete everything because we know that 24 are in A, so everything for, two, for A will be 24. Let's see. 24 minus 8 minus 5 minus 7, that will give you 4. So 4 here remaining. Then we have 30 of B, so B plus 5 minus 14, that will be 3. And finally, we have uh, 36 minus 7 minus 5 minus 14, that will give you 10 for 40. Okay, so that will be your complete set that you are looking for. So for part one, uh, how many students are members of the B but are not members of the other two? So only B, as you can see, only B is three. Now for part two, how many students are members of one or more of the clubs? So it could be one, two, or three clubs. So for this one, it should be um, one or more. So what does it mean? So one, it could be two or three in those clubs. So it could be here, it could be here, it could be anywhere in the group. So we have to add everything and find the answer. So three plus all this, let's try out. So four plus eight plus five plus 14 plus seven plus three plus 10. So add everything, that should give you 51 for the number of students that is in one or more groups. So basically, everyone could be in that uh, condition. It could be in one, two, or three. Okay, and that will be your question number four. Now for number five, um, Archie bought a car from a dealer. The de dealer sold the car for 7,040. Archie paid a deposit of 1,760. Now we have to calculate the deposit as a percentage, so pretty easy. That will be the 1760 divided by the selling price times 100 for the percentage. So 1760 divided by 70, 40 times 100, that will give you 25%. Okay, that is part A of the answer. Now for part B, Archie took out a loan of uh, to, to repay the balance of this. Okay, that's the balance he has to pay. However, He's paying that much per month for 36 months. So what is the amount that he's paying? Let's find out. That will be 36 times 212.67. That will be 7,656.12. That is the amount that he will be paying. Now part one, 
find the amount of interest he's paying, pretty easy. Interest will be the amount he's paying minus the amount that he's actually owing. That will be the interest that he will pay. So answer is this, minus 5280, that will give you 2376.12. Now for part two of the question, the rate of simple interest per year has been charged. So pretty easy, let's see. What is the rate of interest? Now, how many years is 36 months? So 36, we know in one year there's 12 months, that will be 12, that will be three. So it will be four, t equal to two, three. Now, one formula that we know uh, to, to use is that, because it is a simple interest, we have to say amount is equal to the principal, and then we have plus i interest, which is PRT. Now the i is given to you by this, so we can just solve this one, right? So p is the principal times rate, we don't know, and times time, which is 3, is equal to 2376.12. Find the value of all. So 2376.12 uh, divided by, by 3, and then divided by 5280, that will give you 0 0.1500. Zero. Now the rate in terms of percentage, we have to multiply by 100. So 1, 2 is what? It is 15%. That's the rate that you are being charged for this one. Okay, so that will be your question for part B. Now for part C, when the dealer sold the car, he made a profit of 30%. Okay, calculate the profit correct to the nearest dollar that the dealer made on the sale of this car. So let's find out how much money he made on this deal. So let me do this on top. So we know that the selling price was this much. Now the initial price we don't know, but we know that we always consider the initial price to be 100. Now if he made 30% on the selling price, it means that it will have to be at 130%. Now we can first find the value of x easily. So we understand that 130% is supposed to be this much, which means 100% will have to be what? 1740 divided by 130 times 100. That will be 5415.3846. So this is the cost of the car for the, for the dealer, for the retailer. Now the profit will be 7040 minus the answer will be the profit. The profit will be 1624.615. This is the profit. So selling price minus cost will be the profit. Now, correct to the nearest dollar. So this is the decimal place. It is more than five. So we have to add one here. Nearest dollar, that will be 1625 for your answer. And that will be question number five. Okay, so let's move on to question number six. The results of a survey of the number of televisions in 40 households, so everything together is 40 households, are given in the table below. Now, part one, find the mean of the number of televisions per household. Pretty easy, to find the mean, we have to do what? Have to multiply this by this, by this, this, and this. Because we have to find the total number of televisions first and divide by the number of families. So one times eight is eight, plus two times uh, 17 is 34, plus 36, plus 12. So the reason we do that is to find the total number of televisions. Then divide by 40, which is the number of households. 8 plus 34 plus 36 plus 12 divided by 40. That will give you 2.25 televisions per household. Now part two, the survey was extended to include five more families. Okay, five more households. It was found that none of these house had a television. So basically one more, we had five here. So zero, number, this is zero, this is five household. As you can see, now we have a new mean. So we have to find the mean for 45 families. So pretty easy. So to this top here, we had what? We had 90. It will still stay 90 plus zero, 90 divided by 45 for the number of families. So 90 divided by 45 should be two. Two is your answer for part two. Only one mark, pretty easy. Now for part B, so we have 120 child children who ask which color they like the best. Now we have 59 are red, 21 are blue, 
and the rest is yellow. So what is the rest? 120 minus 59 minus 21. That should be 40. So yellow will be 40. Now part one, using a radius of four, draw a uh, pie chart to show these results. So again, pie chart is a circle. We have to show the angles in a circle. So now again, one by one, let's find out. So for red, what is the angle will be for red? It will be 59 over 120 times 360. What is the angle for the blue? It will be 21 over 120 times 360. Okay, so 59 times 120, sorry, 59 divided by 120 times 360, that will be 177. So obviously you have to measure the angle using your, uh, your tools that you are allowed to use, and then you can just draw the circle first with a radius of four centimeters, and then mark this angle. So obviously the last one will be uh, yellow, have to be what? 360 minus 177 minus 363, sorry, that will be 120 for yellow. So basically you have to show this, you have a circle here. So the radius have to be four centimeters and then the angles will have to be somewhat as follows. That will be this and should be something like this. Uh, this should be the biggest one, then this and this. This will be uh, yellow, this will be red, and this will be blue. Have you also mentioned the, the angles that you found for each of the of the pi? This is part A of the question. Now for part two, out of the uh, child children, sorry, who liked blue best of the blue, blue we have 21 in blue, right? Five over seven, which is the chance, were wearing blue socks. That is blue socks, right? Blue socks. Now um, sorry, I think I inversed it. It should be the chance it is wearing blue from the 21, it is equal to 5 over 7. So which means that the number of people who are wearing blue will be 5 over 7 times 21. That should be 15. Right? Let's try. 5 over 7 times 21 should be 15. So the number of children who are wearing blue socks is 15. That's the first thing we can derive from that information. Now, how many of them who liked blue best, which is from the 21, are not wearing socks? Pretty easy, that will be 21 minus 15, that should be 21 minus 15, that will be 6. So 6 will be your answer for part 2, this is only one mark. Okay, now let's move on to question number 7. The diagram shows an open rectangular tank with a base of 20 by 30. Okay. Now the tank contains 9,600 centimeter cube of water. Part A, state the number of liters of water in the tank. So pretty easy. To convert this to liters, we have to divide by 1,000. That's the main thing we have to know. So divide you will have 9.6 liters. Now for part two, calculate the depth of water. So we have to use the volume to find the depth of water because we know that to find the, we know the volume is equal to 9600. How do you find volume of water in this tank? You understand water can take the form of its container. So obviously right now, the water is the volume of the container, which is the rectangle. So it will be the base times the, sorry, the width times the length and times the height. We're supposed to give you this much. So this will give you what? Then 6, 0, 0 divided by 20, divided by 30 will be 16. So height or depth have to be 16 centimeters. Now for part 3 of the question, we have to find the surface area of the tank that is in contact with the water. So we have to use um, some imagination to see which part are in contact with the water. So the first thing is the base, pretty easy. So surface area is the base will be 20 times 30, we have this side and this side, which is 2 times 30, uh, sorry, 20 times the height is 16, and plus we have this side and the back side will be 2 times 30 times 16. Okay, so 20 times 30 plus 2, 20 times 16 plus 2, 30 times 16 
that will be 2200. Two, so the surface area in contact with the water has to be this much, 2, 2, square. Now let's move on to part 4 of the question. The water had entered the tank through a circular pipe of radius 0.8 centimeters cube. So it's centimeters, not cube yet. It flowed through the pipe at 25 centimeters per second. Okay, so how long? Did this much water take to enter the tank? So one by one, let's draw something to understand what's happening. So basically in the tank here, we had a pipe that was connected to the tank. The pipe was a circular pipe. And in one second, so obviously this is the pipe for one second. In one second, there was 25, this is 25 centimeters was flowing in one second. Now the radius itself here was given to you by the value of 0 0.8 centimeters for the radius. So the tank was being filled by this pipe per second at the length of 25 centimeters. So my main question that follows is, what is the volume that was flowing in in one second? So volume will be volume of this shape, which is the volume of a cylinder that will be pi R square h that will be 25 0 0.8 square times 25 times pi that will be 5502654822 this is the volume that was flowing in per second now we know that in total we had this much volume that was flowing in so what is the time taken so one second it uh, so it took one second to get 50 0.3 for example, what about this much? So we have to do, do what? Do this much divided by 50 to see how many seconds it will take. So 960, sorry, 600 zero, zero, divided by answer will give you 190.9. So to the nearest second it has to be 191 seconds for all this stuff to flow in at the volume of 9600 zero, zero centimeters square cube sorry now let's move on to part b of the question now volume of sphere is given to you by this okay now we have 250 a sphere placed at the bottom of the tank now each sphere has a volume of this great now part one calculate by how much the water level in the tank will rise give your answer in millimeters so let's see so first off, how, how, what is the total volume that we place in the tank? So it will be 250 times 2.6, right? If that makes sense. 250 times 2.6, that will be this much. So basically the new volume will be somewhere over here. For example, right? Because now we put all the stuff in the, in the tank. So we want to find this increase. What is this rise? Now this rise as well, we can call the height, uh, call this h for the height, why not? Now, to find this increase, we have to find the volume by how much it was increased. So we just found that by the volume that we uh, of the spheres. The volume by which it was increased was found to be 650. Now again, the volume is the volume of the tank, which is also a rectangular tank, so we can conclude that to find that volume that was increased by, we can simply do the width times the length and times the height by which it was increased. So the height will be what? 650 divided by 30 divided by 20. That will be 1.083 meters. So here we have to give you answer in terms of, this is centimeters, we have to find the answer in terms of millimeters, that will be 10.8 as your answer. Correct your 3SF. That is part one of the question. Now for part two, we have to find the radius of one of these spheres, so pretty easy, that will be what? So the volume is 4 over 3 pi r cube equal to 2.6 for the volume of one of them. So r cube will be 2.6 times 3 over 4 and divided by pi. That will be this, 0 0.62077. 
So R will be cube root, and that will give you 0 0.853. That will be in terms of centimeters for the radius of one of those spheres. Again, this is the formula that is given to you right here. We'll use the volume given to you and equate that to the formula to find the value of R step by step. Pretty easy for this one. That is your question number eight. Now let's move on to question, sorry, no, that, was eight, that, that is eight, <laughs> that was seven. So let's, let's move on to question number seven, sorry, eight. What's happening to me, I don't know. Anyways, we have to answer the whole of this question on a sheet of graph paper. So again, I don't have graph paper, so I will do this on the same page, we'll see what happens. So now the variables x and y are connected by this equation, a very simple equation. Now copy and paste, copy and complete the following values. So pretty easy, replace the values of x in the equation and see what happens. So you will have four square, minus 1, that will be 15, 9 minus 1 will be 8, 4 minus 1 will be 3, that will be 0, that will be minus 1, that will be 0, that will be 3, 8, and 15. This is part 1, pretty easy. So now we have to use a scale of this and this to draw. I hope you guys know how to draw this, and the scale is given to you as well. Again, since I don't have a graph paper, I'll try my best to draw this on the same page as we are given. So here we have y minus 216. So it will be pretty tough for me, but let me try to see what's going to happen here. So let me do this on the same page. So I will go up to the value here of 8. That will be... Okay. So here we need the value of minus 2. That will be minus 2 here. That will be 0. Okay, and that will be my value here for my x-axis has to be one, two, not perfect. We'll see what happens. So you can definitely fast forward this to uh, the time I actually finished drawing the graph because this is just painful to watch, right? <laughs> so I just push to where you wanna see the graph completed. So that will be the value of the y-axis is from minus 2 to the value of 16. So again this will be the value of minus 2. Again my scale is not okay but the idea here is you have to understand how to do the question. It's not about the scale. So here we go, at least for now, right? In exams you do have to know how to uh, read the scale correctly and draw the scale according to the question because here they are asking you specific things you have to give them the specific results for your for your marks in this case uh, this is what i did so for now it seems to be okay let's see what else so here we have the value x will be from 4 minus 4 to 4 that will be uh, let's see we have 2 here 1 2 3 and 4 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and minus 4. Okay, so now we have our scale, so we can draw We can draw the graph. So first point is minus 4, 15. So it should be somewhere over here. And then we have uh, minus 3, 8. Right here, and then we have minus 2, 3. And then we have uh, minus 1, 0. That will be 0 here. And then we have uh, 0 minus 1. That should be right here. Here we have this. And then we have 2 will be the value of 3 again. So that will be right here. And then we have 3 will be 8. And then 4 will be 15. 15 will be right here between those two. Okay, so now once you have the points, you can always connect them with a straight, smooth curve. So let's try your best. Uh, mine will be kind of, I don't know, I hope so it's good, but let's see what happens. Uh, and of course, you will be using a pencil to draw your graphs. You cannot use pen, you will lose marks for that. Here you go. So it's kind of nice, I guess not too bad. And finally you have to label your graph as required 
for your answer. Okay, that will be part B of the question. Now for part C, we just given that f of x is given to you by this. So first thing we have to draw the graph of y equal to f of, f of x, which is x plus, so divide by 2, break it down, that will be 4.5. This is the equation of a straight line, pretty easy. Uh, let's say if x equal to the value of 2, what is the value of y? y will be 5.5. If x equal to the value of uh, 0, y will be 4.5. So let's just do that, why not? So when x is 0, it will be 4.5. So 0 will be right here. 4.5, this is 4 here. This is 5, it will be somewhere right here. And then we have uh, 2, 5.5, 2 is here. 5.5 will be where? This will be 4 here, 5 will be here, 5.5 will be between those two, will be somewhere over here. So let's join that to see what happens. Okay, here you go, this is the graph of y equal to x over 2 plus 4.5. That will be part one of the question. Pretty easy, right? Now let's move on to part two, which is to find the f inverse of the value of three. So step by step, let's first find f inverse. So let y, x plus seven over two. Now we have to cross multiply, you will have two y, x plus seven. So x is equal to two y minus seven. So finally, we conclude f inverse of x is equal to two x minus seven, so f inverse of 3 will be what? It will be 6 minus 7 will be minus 1. This is your answer for part 2. Now for part 3, we have to write down the values of x for where the two points meet. Two graph meets, sorry. You can see here, here, and here. This is where the graph meets. Let's show the corresponding value of x. So from what I can see, this should be uh, about 2.5, and this should be what? Let's see. Let's use my scale here. Uh, from what I can see, it should be minus 2.25. Okay, so let's run the values here. So x have to be minus 2.25, or x have to be 2.50. Now again, this question is will solely depend on your graph that you draw. This which is, will be very important that you plot the points correctly and join them by a smooth curve. Now, the answers here is not how you call this. We don't have an exact answer to get the marks. There will be a range of answers that will be given by the marking scheme for where they will uh, provide the margin of errors for your answer to be accepted. But for that to happen, you have to draw your curve correctly and you have to show how you get the answers. That's the main point as well. Now for part B, we have to find the expression, the equation that is satisfied by these two values of x. Now the question is, how did you obtain those values of x? Is where the graph intersect, which means where they meet or cut. So by that, we know we have to solve a simultaneous equation. So in these kind of questions, it is always going to be the case, you will see that you will have to solve a simultaneous equation at the end to find those values of a, b, and c. So let's do this. So here we have y, and here we have y. So let's replace, you will have what? On one side you will have x squared minus one is equal to x plus seven over the value of two. See, this is a big mistake here. So uh, seven divided by two is what is 3.5. So reach 3.5, not the value of 4.5. So basically these points will be what? 2, that should be uh, 4.5, and this will be uh, the value of 3.5. So again, you see, I made a silly mistake. However, the methods will be the same. So you have to draw this correctly. So let's find out the value here. Times 2, you have 2x squared minus 2 is equal to x plus 7. Now send everything to one side, you will have what? 2x squared minus 1x minus 9 is 0. So. Uh, but looking at this, you can see that this will be A, B, and C. So A, B, and C by comparing this with this. Where A, B, and C are integers, so A is equal to the value of 2, 
B is minus 1, C is minus 9. And this is your question number 8. Let's move on to question number 9. So part A, here we have what? So ABC is a triangle in which the angle ABC is 34 and AC is 15. Now BCD is a straight line and ACD is 60, as we can see here. Now part 1, pretty easy, find the value of BAC. So first thing first, we can realize that, hey, this one is a straight line, this will be 180, everything together, this have to be 120. From this, we can realize that this have to be what? Pretty easy, 180 minus 34 minus 120, which have to be? So this minus this will be 60, minus this will be um, 26. Right, so 26 will be the value of the angle BAC. Now for part B, part 2, BC. How would you find the length of BC? So here we can use what? We can use the sine rule if you want to. Because we have to find the sine which is opposite this. And then we know for this one, which is this. So that will be 15 over sine of 34 is equal to uh, BC sine of 26. So BC will be this one. 15 times sine of 26 divided by sine of 34. That will be 11.8. So BC will be 11.8 centimeters for the value. That will be part 2. Now part B. Now here we have a lake, as you can see here. This is the lake that is uh, drawn on the graph, on the diagram. Now P and Q are points at each end of the lake. Okay, now R is a point on the same level as P and Q on the ground. Okay, good to know. Now, first thing we have to find PQ. PQ will be this one. Now, since we know the two sides of the triangle and the angle in between the triangle, so these two sides, we can use the cosine rule. So, by the cosine rule, we have cosine of the angle is equal to the sum of the two sides and then minus the square of the opposite side, so I sum of the squares first and the minus the, this one, divide by two times the two sides. Again, this is only a formula you have to know to solve this question, okay? This is the cosine rule. So simplify, cos of 112 times 2 times 5, 5 times 70. So let's try again, cos of 112 times 2 times 5, 5 times 70, that will give you this value. Now we have to find minus 2884.4707 that will be 55 five square plus 70 square 7925 minus pq square now pq square is equal to what? this uh, so when you send this over here become plus so plus 2884.4707 that will be this so PQ will be 103.968, which is 104, correct to 3 SF. PQ is 104 meters. Now for part 2, a plan is drawn using a scale of 1 centimeter, so 1 centimeters to 5 meters. This is for the scale that we are using to draw the plan. State the length of P, R, and Q on the plan, so pretty easy. This is 55 mm divided by 5, that will be 11 for P, R. And Q, R divided by 5 will be what? 70 divided by 5 will be 14. So 11 and 14 for P, R, and Q, R. Now, find the area of the triangle P, Q, R on the plan. So one by one. Let's first find the area for this one. So on the plan we have, so we don't need, actually we can just find directly because we know that this is 11 and this is 14. How would you find the area of triangle? We can do half times sine of the angle in between and times the other two sides around the angle. That would be this and times, um, so this is actually 11, 11 and 14 on the plan. Half times sine of the angle, times 11, times 14, that will give you 71.4, that will be on the graph, that will be centimeters square. 
this is the the area on the plan okay now for last one is uh, the area of the lake uh, is this much on the plan so we have to find the actual area again to find this we have to use a scale given to you this is a scale of length as we can see clearly here what is the scale of area it will have to be square both sides that will be one centimeters square that will be 25 meters square now as you can see here we have what on the on the frame on the plan we have 32.4 centimeters square which means if uh, we have to find this value corresponding value we have to multiply by this that will give you what so 32.4 times the value of 25 that will be 810 This will be the area of the lake in the actual actual area of the lake. So one, 1 is equal to 25, so 34 we have to multiply by 25 will give you this value for the lake. So we have to use everything given to you to find the answers for the question. Okay, so let's move on to question number 8. So 10. <laughs> I think I'm tired, that's why. Let's move on. So we have A, B, C, D is a quad where A, B is 4, 8, B, C is 2, 0, and C, D is 8 minus 12. Okay, so here we go, 8 minus 12. Now E, F, G, and H are midpoints of A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, A respectively. Okay, good to know. Now part one is, is to find A, D. Now A, D will be A going to D. Okay, so A going to D, how can we do this? So A, B. So A going to D will be, have to be A going to B, B going to C, C going to D. So let's do this. A going to D will be 4, 8. B going to C will be 2, 0. And C going to D will be 8 minus 12. That will be uh, 6 plus 8, that will be 14. And that will be minus the value of 8 minus this will be minus 4. So A, B, A, D will be this value. Now for part 2, we have to find the magnitude of this will be what? This will be 14 square plus 4 square. 14 square plus 4 square will be 212. Okay, that will be your value uh, for the magnitude of 80. The last one is to show that EF and HD are opposite side of a parallelogram. So let's see how can we do this. First, first find these two values. EF will have to first find from E going to F and then uh, HG, so H going to G. So pretty easy actually because we can see the points that are given to you which is EF, G and H are midpoints of of these uh, things we are trying to find. So first, what is the value of EF? You have to move from E to go to B and then B to F. Now EB is half of AB, which will be 2, 4. And BF will be half of ABC, that will be 1, 0. That will be 3, 4. This is the first one. Now HD, same idea here, HG. You will have to move from what? From You can try, you can move from... So we know AD already, that will be H, D, plus D, G. Right, this way. So HD will be half of AD, that will be 7 minus uh, 2, and then plus DG. So we know that uh, C, we know CD is given to you by 8 minus 12, which means GD will be half of that will be 4 minus 6. However, DC is in the opposite direction, will have to be minus 4, 6. That will give you the value of 3 and that will give you the value of what so minus 2 plus 6 will give you 4 now these two are the same direction as well as the same value so we have shown that the magnitude and direction are the same it will have to be the opposite side of a parallelogram so that is part 3 of question uh, a now for part b the diagram shows a triangle p okay now q has the points minus 2 4 will be this one uh, 6, 0 will be this one, and 6, 4 will be this one. Now, as you can clearly see, the size has changed. 
right? That's the first thing that we can observe for the triangle Q. Okay. Now describe fully the single transformation that maps P onto Q. So this can only be what be an enlargement. So first thing you have to write enlargement. Now what is the scale factor? We can see that the SF have to be the value of because the initial height here was 2, it became 1, 2, 3, 4, it will have to be 2. Okay? And then what is the center of enlargement? You can see that these both join to this point. This will have to be the center, which is minus 2, 4 will be the center of enlargement. Because this is the only point that did not move, because of that it will be also seen as the center of enlargement. Now for part C, the transformation by this matrix maps this uh, square onto this one. So find the points this. So one by one, as we have now, matrix times object is equal to image. Matrix is 5, 0, 2, 3. Object is given to you by 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1. So rows by column here will be. So first value will be 0, obviously rows by column has to be the value of 5, rows by column has to be 7, and that has to be 2. Rows by column, that will be 0, that will be 0, that will be uh, 3 and 3. So the point uh, that we are trying to find this is uh, u prime, v prime, and w prime. For these values, we are trying to find over here. Now for part 2, uh, find the matrix that represents the transformation that maps the image back onto the object. So pretty easy. To get image back to the object, we have to do what? We have to, if you observe, we did this in the first place. Now we have to multiply or pre-multiply to get the object. So we also have to pre-multiply by the inverse, right? So that we get the object back. So the matrix is the matrix inverse of the initial matrix we have used. So pretty easy. To find the inverse, we have the adjoint matrix. That will be what? That will be, we have the switch position. That will be 3, 5, and switch sign. That will be minus 2. What is the determinant of that matrix? That will be 15 minus 0. That will be 15. So M inverse, or the matrix will be inverse. That will be 15, 1 over 15 times the matrix, which is 3, 0 minus 2, 5, which is just the inverse of the initial matrix. And that will be your question number 10. Let's move on to the last question, question number 11. Now, here we have a gardener uses no weed to kill wheat in his lawn. He mixes 15 ml of no weed with 5 liters of water. Find the ratio of no weed to water in the mixture. So pretty easy. So first we have 15 ml, and then we have 15 liters. First we have, sorry, this is 5 liters. First we have to convert them to the same units. So let's change that, that will be what? 15 ml is what? So we can change that to ml as well. That will be 15 ml, that will be 5,000 ml. So cancel, cancel, divide by 5, that will be, or 5, that will be 3, and that will be 1,000. So this is the ratio that we are given here from the mixture, uh, the, the no weed to water, the mixture. Now for part D, the gardener's lawn is a rectangle of 27 and width 25. So basically, this is what we are looking at for the lawn. This is 27 and this is 25. Now the bottle is sold in 500 ml bottles. Okay, good to know. Part A. How many bottles does he need? So let's find out what is the area that we are trying to use. That will be, uh, let's see first, we have 27 here times 25 for the area, for the total area, 27 times 25, that will be 675, the whole thing. Now we know that this will cover only 10, ml, 10 meters per square foot of the lawn. So how much do we need? Let's see. If 10 will be 15 ml, which means 675 will be how much? Will be 
15 divided by 10 times 675. Let's see how much do we need. You will need 101, 2.5 ml. Okay, so now we know in a one bottle, in one bottle we have 500 ml. So for this much, we need how much? So for 101, 2.5 ml, we will need three bottles, if that makes sense. So let's see, let's check. That will be 101, 2.5 divided by 500, that will give you 2.0, that will give you 2.025 bottles, which will means we have to buy three bottles, right? So you have to buy three bottles to use for that. How many are not used So pretty easy? 3 times, so 3 times 500 will be 1500 ml that we bought and minus the one used we use only 101, 2.5 so 1500 minus 101, 2.5 will be 487.5 ml that we don't use this will be part B of the question now for part 2, uh, the lawn is to be made larger the length is increased by 3x and the width is increased by x. So basically, if you think about this question here, our well, lawn was made to be larger. The new length is now 27 plus 3x and the width now is 25 plus x, according to the question. Right. Now, the larger, the area of the larger lawn is twice of the initial lawn. So let's use that. What is the area of the larger lawn? It will be the width or length times width for area of the large lawn it will have to be twice so two times the initial area which was 675 so let's solve and see if we can show this at the end so 25 times these will give you what 675 plus plus um, 27 x and plus 3 x squared that will be 2.675 so 2 times sorry, not 2, point, 2 times this value so let's see what else can we do now we have to send everything to one side you will have 3x square plus 75 plus 27 that will give you 102 and then we have this minus this will give you minus 675 equal to 0 now we can try to divide by 3 everywhere that will be x square plus 102 divided by 3 will be 34 minus 675 divided by 3 that will be 225 this is shown as required exactly as this but we solve the equation giving you answers to two decimal places so one by one let's solve the equation so x will be what will be uh, minus b plus minus root of b square minus 4 times a times c that will be this value right here and divide by 2a will be 2 minus 34 plus root of 20 56 divided by 2 that will give you 5.67 or it can be minus 34 minus root of 2056 divided by 2 minus 39.67 correct to two decimal place now Part C, we have to increase, so find, hence find the length of the larger lawn. So pretty easy, the length will be 27 plus 3 times x, so we'll choose the positive value, obviously, because the length cannot be negative. 27 plus 3 times 5.67, that will give you 44 as your answer. That will be in terms of meters. Okay, so that was the last question of this paper. I hope that was somewhat helpful. As always, uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. So for this one, it should be um, one or more. So what does it mean? So one, it could be two or three in those clubs. So it could be here, it could be here, it could be anywhere in the group. So we have to add everything and find the answer. So three plus all this, let's try out. So four plus eight plus five plus 14 plus seven plus three plus 10. So add everything. That should give you 51 for the number of students that is in one or more groups. So basically everyone could be in that uh, condition, could be in one, two or three.
Okay, and that will be your question number four.